Hi, good evening folks and welcome to your final Wednesday night pub quiz. Um, yep, yeah, this will be the last one folks um, for the foreseeable um, and we're going to end off with a general knowledge pub quiz um, just to round things off. So all that to come up um, for you. Uh, remember that uh, on Sunday the final pub quiz will be a live stream on my Twitch channel. Um, I'll announce more details about that. Um, well, I'll, I've, I've already put it on Facebook for you um, to get in touch with regards to it. Um, and yeah, uh, get in touch if you want to get involved. It's going to be starting at two o'clock and running through to run about whenever we get finished with the bumper quiz, which should be starting about after four o'clock. Um, so yeah, that would be it. Um, but I'll I'll see some things at the end of this quiz um, with regards to. Um, what uh, might come up in the f in the near future, right? Um, so as we are going to get started, it is as I say a general knowledge pub quiz this week. Um, so usual four rounds, but we've got quite a lot of just general knowledge questions in there, folks. Um, four years. So if we get started with that, I'll get up the details. Okay, there we go. Um, so yes, this will be the last one. Um, we're going to start off with a picture round tonight, folks. So get your uh, charger glasses if you're having a wee drink tonight. Um, then wire in. Um, and I hope you're all staying safe and keeping well out there, folks. Um, so your first round this week um, for this general knowledge uh, it's just a picture around of famous faces, folks. Famous faces. Um, might be famous to some, not famous to others. Um, I'd say famous in a loose sense of the word um, with regards to that. So here we go. Here is your first picture. Um, who is that? Who is that punter? Oh, ho, ho. First wee sip there. And absolutely freezing cold. <laughs> Took my breath away, that. Thank you very much to Sandy Martin, um, who dropped these off on Tuesday afternoon for us. Much appreciated, sir. You didn't need to do that. Um, but Sandy's been a loyal um, quiz. Um, getting involved with the quiz. Um, and he's he sent me a nice wee card as well. Um uh, just to see how much he looks forward to the quiz every Wednesday and Sunday. And it made me feel bad. <laughs> Did make me feel bad, to be honest. But um, needs must, to be honest, folks. Needs must. Okay, so that's number one. But much appreciated, Sandy. Thank you very much. Good to hear that you and Irene are doing well. There's number two. Who's that? Yeah, but it's, it's, it's just one of those wee things. But as I say, there is, um, I have got a couple of wee things to announce at the end of the, the quiz. Um, people will oh, wonder what it could be. We'll oh, just see. So that's number two there. Okay, who is that famous face? Right, as, as I always say, you can pause these as we go. There's number three. I'm using the old um, hand face mask there. Be wearing your face masks, folks. Yeah. Makeshift ones. I have been using a big scarf. Or one of the, what is it? Oh, God, the football players wear them when it's dead cold. A snoop, what is it? Now, run the neck, some of them wear them. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're all shouting at me now. Anyway, one of them, snook, 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 I don't know. Anyway, aye, I've been used No, I've been on a lot of public transport and in the shops a lot, but, um, That's number three there, folks. Let's move on to number four. Who is that? Oh, 
we clue there with a obviously with a radio um, station. But do you know who she is? Yeah, weather's been pretty rotten, isn't it? God. Tuesday morning, I thought I'd seen um, Noah sailing past out the front window. Not bad. Had to keep the dog in. I thought, no, you're not taking the dog in me, mate. No, it's not that bad. Take me first. Aye, it was uh, pretty, pretty rubbish. Pretty rubbish. But summer, hopefully we're back next week, folks. Hopefully we'll be back next week. Right, here's number five for you. Who's that? Thought about the I can't grow a beard that that way or like that. I just know one I've not got the patience for it. Um because when it just gets beyond this bit and gets a wee bit scraggy, it just looks I look like stick at the dump and no, it's no it's no my style. But hats off to him. Doesn't look happy about it, mind you. And you know, he looks a bit miserable, does your man there. Maybe he's lost his clippers and that's why he's up and the barbers are shut. Fuck. Got to get it. Okay, so that's number five. Let's move on to number six. Who is that? It's one of the ones, isn't it? You're like... Well, I've, it's like, I've, I've been doing mine hair as well, as you can tell. And, eh... Uh, and then the other day I was just, what was that? I think I was at the garage or something. Or something. And I, I was I was stoning in the queue and I went like that. And I just touched the back of my head and I went, fucking hell, man. I forgot to shave that bit. <laughs> so, like that. Oh, okay, I'm right, I'm right. You can't see. I could get Jillian to do it for the wee man. But anyway. Here's number seven. All right, mate, you're putting a pair of glasses on, you don't need to make a bit of drama about it. Maybe he doesn't realise he's that, you know, high up. And now when he puts glasses on, he's going to get off a shock. Off a shock. It's good, right, it's that, man. Yes. Yeah. I like to you now put them in the freezer um, if they're not that cold and uh, I think I've left that one in the freezer too long oh, just go it before it started to ice up there's number 8 who's that number 8 I don't leave bowls of beer in the, the freezer <sighs> done that years ago when I stayed at my man dad's Blew, literally blew the, the freezer door up. Look at Al-K that's here. <laughs> Shit. And then I think when we were away in a big family, I think it was for my 40th actually, we were in York, and I was at a can, it might have been a bowl of beer as well, and the accommodation was staying on my cousin. Late on at night, I'll put, I'll put, I'll put another one in the freezer and then <clears throat> fell asleep on the couch. Everybody else was in their bed. Boom! <laughs> Fucking wood sheets. Like three in the morning. Oh, shit. Off a mess. Off a mess. At least you could pick up the beer because it's solid, do you know what I mean? It's in a lot of fuck. Bits of glass and all that. I've got to be careful though. Right, there's number nine. Number nine there. Went back a wee bit for that one. Excuse me, excuse me, sorry. Very rude. Oh. So that's number nine there. As I say, you can pause these. And here is number 10. Who is that? 
Well, as of Monday, isn't it, that the beer gardens can open? I think I'll hold that for a wee bit. Considering it would be depending on the weather, and I, I think a lot of pubs will be like, is it worthwhile opening up the beer gardens? I think a lot of them in Glasgow and that will do it when they've got, got big enough space, like maybe like Sloan's and stuff, places like that. Oh, where else up has got beer? I know that Mr. Fucking Martin, him, Witherspoon's man's opening up all his pubs, isn't he? And then it'll be the 5th, is it 15th of July? No? So I can probably end in the quiz, maybe there. I don't know what's happening with the pub quizzes anyway. I don't know about the granary and the mill house. I have no idea, folks. No idea. Right, okay, so that is you. Remember any of them you want to look back at, just go and check them. For the moment, um, if you want to, uh, if you wish to do it round by round, you can send me your answers just now via Messenger or WhatsApp. Um, if not, then you can wait to the end and file them all in at the one time. Um, or if you're just playing along at home, um, well, you're mostly sort of playing along. I won't say that you're playing along, but if you're just playing along for fun and want to check out your answers, um, they're not submitting them. They will be revealed at the end. All right. Okay. So get all that wee bit of under me because I'm repetitive there. But let's have a wee bit of music and let's have a bit of jungle with the heat. Right on time. Back by the beach. Still gonna bring the heat. on to our next round um, what have we got next it's general knowledge from here on in folks um, ok so here is your first question of round 2 question number 1 who was the first European explorer to reach India by sea who was the first European explorer to reach India by sea of course it's um, 
horse racing wise folks quite an exciting weekend ahead with um, the Epsom Derby and the Oaks running the first running the same day for the first time in God knows how long any tips well in the Oaks I think frankly Darling um, would have a, a real belter of a chance um, won at Ascot the other week there very impressively um, and Philly out of Frankel. Well, Frankel's are da. That's a da, Frankel. And in the uh, Debsom Derby itself, never been a great betting race for me, I must admit. I've never been really successful punting wise, but um, I do like Pile Driver. If he handles, of course, big Pile Driver. Probably around about 12, 14 to land, and it might be a worth a wee each way punt. Um, English King's a favourite, and you've got Cameco in there as well, but. I always look for a bit of value, and I think big bio driver could run well at big odds if he handles the track. Right, question number two. Rick Allen is best known as being the drummer with which rock band? Rick Allen is best known as being the drummer with which rock band? Yeah, then on Sunday, what a what a day's racing on Sunday, by the way, folks. For huge racing fans out there, but you've got Haydock and Sandown. Um, Haydock's got a great guard on, and Sandown has the Coral Eclipse. What a race that's set up to be old and we enable in there the new Gayath uh, Gayath um, and Japan Lord North. Oh, looks a real interesting co- contest there, um, folks. Sunday, Sandow. Okay, so that's question number two. Question number three. Um, in which country is Mount Kilimanjaro located? In which country is Mount Kilimanjaro located? And Sandy dropped his after the date. Uh, Tuesday, he went. You might be getting a bit sick of the year, Bingles, Gary, are you? Nah, not really. Not really. Not at the moment. But two France and Canals in the, the fridge, and I, I actually should have gave them to you, Sandy, because I'll, I'll probably not drink them now. So I'll maybe drop them off at you. A couple of France and Canals there. I know that probably you and I mean like the Paulan, Paulander, but um, let me know if you want. Right, so that's question three. Question number four. Which golf course was due to stage the 149th Open Championship this summer? Which golf course was due to stage the 149th Open Championship this year? That's this summer. Obviously cancelled. Traditionally on the, the usually with the, and I'm going to even, I'm going to, here you are, I'm helping you. It's no St Andrews, right? Because that was stage the 150th, which would have been meant to be next year. But now that'll be in 2022. Because um, St Andrews wants to hold the 150th. It would have typically have staged this year because it's usually in a five-year cycle for uh, St Andrews. And it's always like 10 or a zero and a five at the end of the year is St Andrews really. T- typically. Not all the time, but typically. But this year it was meant to be where? Not St Andrews, but where else? The 149th Open Championship. So will be staged there next summer. Bit strange not having the, you know, like Wimbledon meant to have started on Monday, wouldn't it have? I don't know, just get a bit, you know, even with the football and then you're watching it and there's like no crowd and, and I, I was reading something today and it was saying is it affecting the quality of the football? Maybe it is. I think some of the, the players are lacking a bit of atmosphere, aren't they? I don't know. Question number five. TV presenter Kat Dealey is married to which comedian and presenter? TV presenter Kat Dealey is married to which comedian and presenter? Now, there's a few folk in the sporting world getting a wee bit angry. Um, a few little cricketers are getting a wee bit upset saying, how can they not be playing? Well, I suppose I've got a point. They play, especially a lot of the one day, you know, the county cricket, they don't play that much in front of a crowd anyway. So, I get their point. Mind you, with the horse racing, 
they're actually feeling it's better for the horses that there's no crowd because the, the horses are much more relaxed. Um which is a benefit for them, especially for the, the big races like the, the Derby or something. Any wee element that you might think spooks your, spooks your horse, any of that element that can be taken away, and we have that because there'll be a big crowd in the in the common ground of Epsom. In the free land. But we're going to have to close that off. Question number six. What is the name typically given to the dish that combines the likes of lobster with steak? What is the name typically given to the dish that combines the likes of lobster with steak? It's just an I think restaurants just do that to take the piss, really. And they're just putting too expensive meals on the lamp plate and going, if you're daft enough to pay for that, then go for it, mate. That's how the restaurants do it. No, that's how they'll probably be making their money. I'll go for that. I was ready to see the answer there again. Shocking, Gary. Shocking. Mm -hmm. Aye, Doug agrees. You would like a bit of lobster and steak, wouldn't you? Right, question number seven. What is the largest living species of lizard? What is the largest living species of lizard? Don't see Godzilla. Godzilla. Or the Loch Ness Monster. No, we just don't know, do we? Is it lizard? Yeah, it just been a big, big stick or something that was in the, the lock. Been there a couple of times, I've not seen it myself. No, that approves it. Well, here we go. The dishwasher's kicked in. I'll be ready for the old beeps in a minute. So let's squeeze in number eight before that happens. Who's the only Aussie to have played James Bond on screen? Who's the only Aussie to have played James Bond on screen? It's like that scene at a home alone, isn't it? When he goes down into the the attic or the basement and the wee I think it's the the boiler kicks in he's like oh, shut up no my dishwasher doesn't scare me no it's come alive sometimes I, I didn't put it on Jillian put the, put the dishwasher on I wouldn't have put it on because I know I'm doing this tonight And then because it goes into a wee break, it goes like, ah, it's a big rest. And then just at the end, it fires up again. Very rude. Right, question nine. In the summer of... In the summer of 69... It's not... I don't like Brian Adams. Or in the summer of 1996, the Fugees reached number one in the UK singles chart with a cover of which song? In the summer of 1996, the Fugees... Reached number one in the UK singles charts with a cover of which song? Just done that, that bit there. I've got another bowl in the, in the freezer, I better remember. Okay, that's question nine. Let's move on to your next one. Question number ten. Vancouver is located in which Canadian province? Vancouver is located in which Canadian province? So any used maddies out there queuing up to get any likes of Primark? No. I wonder how many people in that queue for Primark had been up in arms about like the queue in Pride Primark or anywhere up and down the country where there's been issues about um, people saying, oh, it's disgraceful, um, statues and sl slavery and street names and slavery, but it'll quite happily queue up and uh, buy a t shirt at 199 that's been made by an eight year old in Bangladesh. Hmm. Aye. See, 
Ja, nu am um, thinking about uh, past slavery issues in Glasgow. Shocking. Shocking. But I just it's the hypocrisy at times that I've I've got it needs to be, you know. And I think we're all following it, so I think you've got to be careful what you say, um when actually we don't really know a lot of the modern stuff we're buying, where it comes from, who's making it. Anyway, anyway. Let's get back to fun times, Gav. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the end of round two. Um, usual rules apply there, folks. Um, so let's get to um, a wee bit of music while we think over any of them or send me your answers. Let's have a bit of cocktail twins and a belly do drops. Drops. <laughs> Such ones out of Liz Fraser and Cock Two Twins with pearly dewdrops drops drops. They do, yeah. Right, let's move on. Round three is oh, well, ironically enough, it's general knowledge again. More general knowledge questions, folks. Okay, so here's question number one of round three. Which African nation reached the quarterfinals of the FIFA World Cup in 2010? Mm. Which African nation reached the quarterfinals of the FIFA World Cup in 2010? We mix bag, of course, that's the way it should be in these situations. (sighs) 
So that's question number one there. Which African nation reached the quarterfinals of the FIFA World Cup in 2010? Question number two. The Gatun Lake is part of which major canal? The Gatun, G-A-T-U-N, Gatun, Gatun Lake is part of which major canal? Should I check that out before I read it out, you know? So if you want to get involved in Sunday, folks, with the live um, quiz, um, just let me know. I'll see whether I can slot you in in some of the mastermind. Well, who wants to be a millionaire and pop master? Pop master. I'm not going to do as many as, so be like two pop master, two who wants to be a millionaire and two mastermind. I don't want to give myself too much work today because I've got a bumper quiz today. There will be a movie picture quiz um, and a music quiz. All from two o'clock. Going to cram all that in before I run about half four when the bumper quiz will f will be on, and we'll get that right through to the end of play. Right, question number three: What is the name of the official residence of the first minister of Scotland? What is the name of the official residence of the first minister of Scotland? Um, I so let us know. And get in touch with us. If it's mastermind that you're on today, obviously let me know what your special subject would be so I can look into that. I say a lot of work today. Oh, it's, this is that, isn't it? And then it's finished. Let's do it. Yeah, so we'll do that. Um, now, the leaderboard with regards to Sunday's leaderboard is kind of finalised now. Um, so David Graham's the winner. Right. I've not made a big announcement about it, but we will announce that on officially on Sunday. Um, and it's um, it's um, everybody in behind. Uh, I'm going to leave that because there'll be a chance to win extra points on uh, the card game on Sunday uh, for those teams that finished in behind Davy on uh, Sunday. There, um, we might day play your cards right depending on times. We'll see how it goes. Right, question number four. Who is actress Kate Hudson's mother? Who is actress Kate Hudson's mother? First reading that, I'm going, who is actress Kate Hudson? Who is she? Who is she? Who's Kate? Who's Kate, Hud who's Kate Hudson's mom? Who's that? Who's that mom? Okay. Right, question number five. In which year did the following occur? Apollo 13 mission is aborted. The Beatles release the album Let It Be. And the October crisis occurs in Quebec, Canada. In which year did the following occur? Uh, uh, <laughs> Apollo 13 mission is aborted. The Beatles release the album Let It Be. And the October crisis occurs in Quebec, Canada. I played doing the, 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 the Apollo 13 situation there. Aye, they just aborted the mission. Aye, it was, they go there and oh, just turn back. Aye, nah, I can't be bothered now. It's a lot more serious than that, you know what I mean? But I've got, I'm not going into all the detail. You've seen the film. Or if you've not, just watch it. <laughs> It's not that when you're like going somewhere and you go halfway through it, go, oh, can't be bothered. Oh, I'm just getting back here, man. It's not like that. Wasn't he? Is just, I'm aborting this mission to the pub. <laughs> I've just got to walk him. Not that we'd ever abort a mission to the pub, would you? So we're looking for the year there when all that happened. Right, question number six. Which Scottish presenter? was host of the former BBC Two quiz show, Catchword. Which Scottish presenter was host of the former BBC Two quiz show, Catchword? There you go. 
Would you make a wee bor- policy where you say speech about let's just spend lots of money on building things? Let's try to build things. I just basically it was, it, everything was said in threes. So jobs, jobs, jobs. Build, build, build. I think the Mary said it that it was trying to make convince everybody that it was that this is what I'm doing. Um, although when you watched him doing his, his, his speech behind his wee plinth thing, what was mere disconcerting, I think, was the build, build, build message was slanty. So that doesn't fill you with confidence, does it? Here, yeah, mate, you better get a fucking Mercury level on that fucking build, build, build thing. I think that's no spit squint. Ah, I'll be all right. We're just throwing everything up for build, 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 jobs, jobs, jobs. When in fact, it's no really new money. Um, there's a lot of complexities. Just read up about it. You should read up about it. Because it's... Oh, fucking barely ending, man. Honest to God. Question number seven. Glenn, the Glenn Free song, The Heat Is On, featured on the soundtrack of which 80s movie? The Glenn Free song, The Heat Is On, featured on the soundtrack of which 80s movie? I'm such a... It's the press up things in it. I'm, I'm fitting healthy. Look, I'm doing press ups. And he's, what was it, the mail on Sunday? I, I was like, I'm so ju- judgmental. On Sunday morning, I'd taken the dog out. And um, I was driving back in the car. And uh, I had to take the dog out of the car. <laughs> There's no walks on. Just going in the car, kidding on, I'm taking you, it's pushing the rain out there. No, I usually go somewhere a wee bit secluded, um, so it's and he's got space to run about. And, you know, it's just social distance for the rest of the fucking world. Um, but I, when I was coming back, I mean, do you know what, I'm going to go and get a paper. Not got a paper for ages, get a wee bit of Sunday reading. And I went into the show, but, and uh, there's a boy in front of me, he must have been in, I would see in his early 20s. And he had the mail on Sunday in his home. Terrible, shouldn't be judgmental, but it's like the day in the news I found out was that when Andy Gray read the Daily Express. Uh, but uh, I was in there by my morning star. <laughs> <laughs> Question number eight Which Scottish musician? co-wrote the Mike and Mechanics hit The Living Years, along with Mike Rutherford. Which Scottish musician co-wrote the Mike and Mechanics hit The Living Years, along with Mike Rutherford? No, I was buying that. The Sun on Sunday. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I was buying the Observer. <laughs> used to buy it all the time. used to get the Guardian delivered, actually. But, I wasn't finding the time to read it all. There's a lot of reading to it. But there was some good, interesting articles in it. Ah, the newspapers industry is on its arse, really. Which is a shame. Speaking as a former freelancer. Question number nine. The River Ganges rises in which mountain range? The River Ganges rises in which mountain range? Ah, oh. Okay, and your final question of this round. Who is the only tennis player to win the men's singles title at the US Open on three different surfaces? Who is the only tennis player to win the men's singles title at the US Open on three different surfaces? It originally used to get played in grass, and then uh, they changed it to clay, um, and that didn't work out too well. Um, Well, no, they changed it to clay for, what was it, for TV purposes? Um, and I think they could play games later at night. And then they, they moved to um, the Billie Jean King Tennis Centre, Flushing Meadows. So. And that's when it's played in the hard court. But there was one player that won, in all, won titles on all three, of their surfaces, all three of those surfaces when 
it was the US Open was played on those surfaces. <laughs> anyway, who is the only tennis player to win the men's singles title at the US Open on three different surfaces? Name one of them, get up. Right, okay. I'll have a wee break there, folks. You can do your usual if you want. Send them in your answers and so on and so forth. In the meantime, let's have a bit all of this track. We guy here from Northern Ireland, a guy called David Holmes. This is I Heard Wonders, and it is a wonderful song. Kind of takes me back to 2012, actually 2012 in the Olympic Games in London, featured in the opening ceremony, that's all. Um, well used, Underworld were the music creators, 
create creators at that. And I actually watched it. I went. I, I came across it again on new, uh, YouTube, and I watched a bit of it, and it was fucking brilliant. I think it's an amazing achievement that um, uh, opening ceremony. Danny Boyle, of course, directed it. Fantastic. Go back and watch it. It's really good. Oh, Barry Davis does a commentary on it. Right, round four. General knowledge again. Yeah, here we go. Let's get moving. Let's get doing it. Right, uh, question number one of round four. HMS Exeter and HMS Ajax were involved in which naval battle of World War Two against the Admiral Graf Spee? HMS Exeter and HMS Ajax were involved in which naval battle of World War Two against the Admiral Graf Spee? What was the name given to the battle, basically? Made a film about it. So they did. Oh, oh come on. I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm all right. Just gets a bit tired. Oh, my neck's a wee, man. Oh, just fall apart. Really hard. Question number two. Which band have had world tours named Bridges to Babylon and a bigger bang. Which band have had world tours named Bridges to Babylon and a bigger bang? Oh, did you watch some of the Glastonbury stuff over the weekend? Folks, no? Alright, okay. Just thought I'd ask, you know, I was, you know. It's only an iPlay on the I think it's still available on the iPlay. It's worth a wee watch. Some good, good performances on there. Others best avoided, you know. But oh, there is some good genes there. It's Sheeran. Oh, I, I stumbled across it. Did you watch the David Bowie one? Bowie was on, in, was it Sunday night? And um, that's the first time it's ever been shown. In its entirety. Um, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Question number three. Which Italian city is the capital of Lombardy? Which Italian city is the capital of Lombardy? The, the region of Lombardy. Aye, well, which some of you might know it already. It was, obviously, it was back in 2000, David Bowie played. And, and at that time, he was kind of going through a wee bit of a, I wouldn't say lull, but um, he wasn't playing big, massive gigs and stuff like that. Um, and obviously, what happens when you do Glastonbury and you play the pyramid stage... The kind of common practice is that that gives you, you then BBC Two then show you a full because you're headlining they show you a full gig, and that's been the practice unless there's, I think I'll, I'll not go into that now. But anyway, David Bowie wasn't he too keen on it, and the reason being he was a bit nervous that it might not come across well, um, and he thought, God, I'm broadcasting here to the whole the whole world, literally. Um, and if this doesn't go right, I'm just going to get slated. So the agreement was initially that they would show the first four songs and then they would do the encore, which was a, a two-hour gig. Anyway, we'll move back to that in a minute. Question number four. What nationality was former Formula One driver Gerhard Gerhard? <laughs> really, Gary? What nationality was former Formula One driver Gerhard, Gerhard Berger? Um, aye, so he was a wee bit nervous about the whole situation. Um, and the BBC were really like, come on, I'm sure he'll be fine, blah, 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 um, and try to encourage him. And then he came out and he did, what was it he did? Uh, he did, it was a China girl in um, Life on Mars, was it? And then stay. And then the BBC guy was at the side of the stage and he was basically trying to get the attention. I don't know what David Bowie, but of his, I think his manager at the time, and saying, Look, this is, he's damn brilliant. The crowd, he's got the crowd in the palm of his hand. Can we not just play this through? And, they, and I think the manager had looked and David Bowie knew that after that fourth song that that was it. But I think they managed to squeeze in the fifth. Um, but Bowie was like, No. Um, so they, they had to cut and go back 
and it was Jamie Theakston that was Jamie Theakston I know that was presenting and the poor guy must have been like I'm going to get totally vilified because no other acts were lined up on any of the other stage I think Basement Jacks or something might be playing on the other stage or whatever they weren't the own yet so they were like they had to show this documentary of like a five minute documentary with Billy Bragg and people were like fucking Billy's <laughs> on Question number five, what is the surname of the brothers who have appeared in soaps such as Emmerdale, where they played Adam Barton, and Coronation Street, where the other played Jason Grimshaw, respectively? Okay, what is the surname of the brothers who have appeared in soaps such as Emmerdale and Coronation Street? So it's just look for the surname of the brothers. One was in Emmerdale, the other was in Corey. But I... And basically the BBC didn't want to blame Bowie because they, they thought, oh, that's too thingy. They just sort of played around it and then they went back and did the encore, which was great. But there was a lo- there was even a hod up until they actually could basically release it. Um, I think that's the first time it's been shown, I think, on Sunday there in its full entirety. I think BBC Four, a couple of years ago, showed a big chunk of the gig um, but no that was the first time they showed it all I think the Rolling Stones were the same I don't think they had their full gig shown in its entirety at Glastonbury I think it was only they allowed certain songs um, and that's why the other night it was they, they, they did the full one anyway Question number six. Ritzina is a wine which originates from which country? Ritzina is a wine that originates from which country? And it's Bowfin, man. Totally Bowfin. I I remember it teeing the park one year. Was it Green Day? Who I always thought, I'm not a massive Green Day fan, but they were playing the main stage um, at teeing the park. And I never went to see them because I just thought, nah, not my cup of tea. I was in the dance stage. And then I remember when I um, I thought I could see it on the telly, you know, but they refused. They didn't allow them to, the BBC to show any of it because they were recording it for a, I think it was for a, a DVD or something. I don't know, it was something like that anyway, but I just shows you. I can't I really care about it. Yeah, cheers. Question number seven. The bird, the Arctic Tern, holds which record in the animal kingdom? The bird, the Arctic Tern, holds which record in the in the animal kingdom? Long jump record. <laughs> the Arctic Tern holds the pole vault record. Or the discus. Horrible feeling that when you're drinking and then you get a, a, a bump coming on halfway through it. Horrible feeling. Terrible. One of the worst feelings in the world. There he is. Question number eight. Which movie is set in the Cold Mountain Penitentiary? Which mount, m- mountain? Which movie is set in the Cold Mountain Penitentiary? I enjoyed watching some of it back. Amy Winehouse was uh, great. Um, there was... Who else was there? Well, Jilly, we, we watched a bit of Beyonce. Jilly wanted to watch a bit of Beyonce. Watched that and then we watched the Chemical Brothers again. Oh, brilliant. Um, and... Who else did I see? <laughs> I'm totally forgotten. John Hopkins, Orbital. Seen a bit of Orbital on that. Um, underworld, they were on it. There wasn't any prodigy you can find him. Mm. Mm. Pulp, it's pulp on it. I think I've seen a bit of that. Anyway, it's all there on the iPlayer. Have a wee swatch at it. Question number nine Which band's debut album of 1980 was entitled Boy? I was actually going to mention this band when I was going through the Glassmary. Which band's debut album of 1980 was entitled Boy? Mm. 
Don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to sell these now. <laughs> Relax, Gary. Chill, man. Spend about time with your wife. Watch box sets like I May Destroy You. Is any of you been watching that? It's quite intense. Quite hard to follow at bits, but it's good. I like it. I think it's good. But that's quite... Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. What's going on there? It'll be a wee bit of me out. White House coming out us. Oh, <laughs> no go there <laughs> right let's move on to question number 10 no Mary fuck off Mary question 10 in the first series of men behaving badly who played Martin Clune's flatmate in the first series of men behaving badly who played Martin Clune's flatmate I was originally on ITV, um, men behaving badly. Or STV, as you would say up here, of course. But who played? Who played his flatmate? It wasn't Neil Morrissey, of course, because he appeared later on. Somebody else. Who was it? I think they get the picture, Gary. They get the picture now, mate. You can shut them. Okay. Right. That is it, folks. That is the end of your Wednesday night quizzes. Anyway. Right. Uh, if you've still got that round to send me um, via Messenger or WhatsApp, you can do that now. Um, or if you've just been waiting to the end of the quiz, send them all to me and I want to do that now. Do it now. Fucking now. Go on. I'll wait. Don't give you all that. Get it done now. I'll give you this tune to get it done. Play a wee bit of Bjork. I liked Bjork. I actually fancied her a wee bit, actually. She's a bit mental. But um, this is from her post album, which I did. I, I, I did. I actually seen her in Virgin Megastore once. She was in a lift. I, I was looking at uh, records and I turned around and looked at her. The lift doors, the lift doors were just about be here in my cooker, which you can't really see because my cooker's just down there. There's my cooker there. See my cooker there. Aye, right. Well, anyway, that <laughs> that was a distance away. The elevator, and I'm flying through records, and the elevator door opened, and I went. And I smiled, and she smiled back at me, and I went, "Oh, that's Bjork." And the doors shut back up. Anyway, that's my brief moment of. Celebrity meetings are a celebrity. And here's a song, Hyper Ballad. Uh -huh. Play this well, you get yourselves all sorted out there, folks. Um, and then I'll be back with your answers. I'm 
Back to what I was saying there about her. Um, she wasn't in the opening in the uh, Virgin Mega Stores in Glasgow that time when I seen her. She was doing a promotion of her album. Just in case you thought, ah, she was in the or something, but she wasn't. She was promoting her album. And there was a massive queue of Bjork fans outside. And the wee guy, are you here to see Bjork? And I went, no, I'm just in to buy a couple of records, mate. I don't go. And I go to see her in the old, didn't they? <laughs> anyway. Right, let's get on with your answers. Picture round was first up, folks. Um, famous faces. All right, let's go through them. Number one, that's Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem with the Billboard one, top one, top ten. One of America's top ten. Remember that? It used to be on at night. STV, wasn't it? Anyway, that's what it is. Number two is Angelica Houston, the actress. I think she went out with or she many to him. I don't know. With Jack Nicholson, anyway. Number three is uh, Francesco Totti. Uh, bit different there, but it's a bit pensive there. Aye, aye, don't know what he's thinking about. Dotty, maybe. Uh, number four is the broadcaster Emma Barnett. Emma Barnett um, on Five Live. Number five is um, R.E.M.'s lead singer. Well, was um, Michael Stipe. Michael Stipe. Number six, um, Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks of oh, Fleetwood Mac fame. Of course, pretty good solo career herself. Number seven is Jeremy Vine from The Vine Show and Radio 2 as well. Number eight is the model and presenter Tyra Banks. Tyra Banks. Number nine is... That was number eight. Did I say eight? Or did I, anyway, number nine is the former German Chancellor Helmut Kohl. Helmut Kohl. And number ten is actor... Sanjeev Kohli. Sanjeev Kohli, of course, best known from Still Game. And we'll just clarify those answers for you there, folks. There they are. Okay. Right, let's go through your other answers. Round two, general knowledge. Um, question number one. Who was the first European explorer to reach India by sea? That was Vasco da Gama, the Portuguese. Two, Rick Allen is best known as being drummer with which rock band? That's Def Leppard. Of course, he um, had to have his, le- his arm amputated after a car accident, but still successfully played on. Question three, in which country is Mount Kilimanjaro located? That's Tanzania. Question four, which golf course was due to stage the 149th Open Championship this summer? That was Royal St George and Sandwich in Kent. Question 5, TV presenter Kat Daly is married to which comedian and presenter? That's Patrick Keelty. Question 6, what is the name typically given to the dish that combines the likes of lobster with steak? That's surf and turf. Question 4, what is the largest living species of lizard? That is the Komodo dragon. And question 8, who is the only Aussie to have played James Bond on screen? That's George Lazenby uh, and His Majesty's Secret Service. And Question 9. In the summer of 1996, the Fugees released, uh, reached number 1 in the UK singles charts with a cover of which song? That was Killing Me Softly. Roberta Flack song, of course. Or well, she sung it. Question 10. Vancouver is located in which Canadian province? That's British Columbia. Moving on to your next one. More general knowledge. Round 3. Question 1. Which African nation reached the quarterfinals of the FIFA World Cup in 2010? That was Ghana. 
That was the World Cup in South Africa. Question two, the Gatun um, Lake is part of which major canal? That's the Panama Canal. Question three, what is the name of the official residence of the First Minister of Scotland? That's Butte House. Question four, who is actress Kate Hudson's mother? That's Goldie Hawn. Question five, and in which year did the following occur? Apollo 13 mission is aborted. The Beatles released the album Let It Be in October, and the October crisis occurs in Quebec, Canada. That was in 1970, 50 years ago. Question six, which British, uh, sorry, Scottish presenter was host of the former BBC Two quiz show Catchword? That was Paul Coyer, first ever voice held on Channel 4, actually. Question seven, the Glenn Free song, The Heat is Hard, It's on the Street, featured in the soundtrack to Beverly Hill Cops. Beverly, Hill, Beverly Hills Cop, carry on. Question eight, which Scottish musician co-wrote the Mike Mechanics hit The Living Years along with Mike Rutherford? That was B.A. Robertson. Um, question nine, the River Ganges rises in which mountain range? That's the Himalayas. And question ten, who's the only tennis player to win men's singles titles? At the US Open in three different surfaces, it's Jimmy Connors, Jimmy Connors. Uh, round four, more general knowledge. Question number one, HMS Exeter and HMS Ajax were involved in a naval battle. Which naval battle in World War II against the Admiral Graf Spee? That was the Battle of River Plate. Which band had world tours named Bridges to Babylon in the Bigger Bang? That was, of course, the Rolling Stones. Question three, the Italian city uh, that is capital of Lombardy is Milan, Milano. Question four, what nationality was former F1 driver Gerhard Berger? It uh, is um, Austrian. Question five, what is the surname of the brothers who appeared in soaps such as Emmerdale and Coronation Street, respectively? That's Their surname is Thomas Ryan and Adam Thomas. Question six, Ritzina is a wine which originates from which country? That's Greece. Question seven, the bird that Arctic Tern holds which record in the animal kingdom? King, 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 kingdom? That's the longest migration. That's the longest migration. Um, question eight, which movie is set in the Cold Mountain Penitentiary? That's the Green Mile. Question nine, which band's debut album of 1980 was entitled Boy? That's U2. And question ten, in the first series of Men Behaving Badly, who played Martin Clune's flatmate? It was Harry Enfield. Right, there you go, folks. That's your whack there. So, hope you did well. Um, I'll put up a leaderboard later on to see how well you have done. Um, and thanks once again, folks, for taking part in all the midweek speciality quizzes. Um, really appreciate your support. Um, it's been fantastic. It's been great. Um, it's filled the, the midweek slot up in it. It's just something to pass the time in a wee Wednesday night. Um, and, yeah, that is it, really, with regards to that. What I will say is, do subscribe to my YouTube channel, this channel that you're watching on the new. Just click the sub subscribe button. And what will happen is, when I do a wee speciality quiz, you will get notified. Um, and you get an email or whatever way you want to be notified, um, and you can log in and uh, do the quiz to your heart's content. Um, so I will do a Euros quiz um, uh, soon. That'll be up um, on the channel um, over the next week or two, uh, and it will not be send your answers to me or anything like that. You'll just... Do it and then see what your answers are at the end of it um, and see how well you've done. And you can maybe put in the comments on the video as to how well you did do. Um, I'll be picking up on all that sort of stuff um, from time to time. So, as I say, subscribe to the YouTube channel for notifications of when that Euros uh, football quiz will be released. But I will be back on Sunday from 2 o'clock on my Twitch channel. Um, a link to it will be available on my Facebook page um, and I will also be posting a link to, uh, of it on Sunday um, for you to access via that way. Um, if not, it uh, is, is it twitch twitch.tv forward slash gmcdaniel88 um, is the address. Um, I'm sure it is. <sighs> um, 
But yeah, you can access it via that. Uh, but if you follow me on Facebook, then you should get it from there. Uh, so yeah, much appreciated. As I say, the respond to my earlier Facebook post about um, getting involved with the live quiz. Um, if you want to do that, that would be great. Just let me know. Um, but if not, I will see you all on Sunday for that live stream of the quiz. Um, it'll be good to get a bit of interaction, a bit of banter flying about. That'll be fun. Um, there is also a music quiz in there prior to it, and a music, uh, sorry, a movie picture quiz as well. And I'm looking for contestants for Pop Master, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and Mastermind. Um, if they've not been filled up already. Okay, so. Adios for Wednesday nights, folks. Once again, absolutely bold over with your support. Um, and I'm glad that I've allowed some folk to take, um, uh, fill up their time during what has been a trying time for everybody over the past couple of months. Um, and I know it's been tough. Um, and hopefully over the next couple of weeks, um, because we're, you know, baby steps here and there, that we will all be seeing each other having a pint and a laugh and what have you in time to come. And to those that watch this um, and maybe tune in for the Wednesday night pub quizzes that I don't know, um, who don't go with the pub, um, the pub quiz in Stuart or whatever, but have enjoyed tuning into my quiz um, because I've heard it through the grapevine, heard it through the grapevine, then great to have you on board, folks, and I really appreciate it. And um, I hope you've sort of, um, enjoyed the quizzes that have been uh, put up. Uh, every Wednesday and Sunday but I will be back on Sunday one more shout, one more last hurrah folks, um, and one more last hurrah from this now I'd like to say now i like to say goodbye to all my fellow friends, and if you like this shit on here, I'll see your ass again I will see you, your ass well, well, I'll see your ass again tomorrow I don't know, I don't know but anyway, much appreciated again. I don't know, I can't say much more, but other than I love you all. You've been fantastic. See you soon. See you Sunday. I'll be back Sunday on this level.